So let me just get started then with the new banking, um, shadow banking, central banking, and the future of global finance. Um, so I'm going to be trying today to draw together the last couple lectures we did forwards and futures, okay, and, and we know about foreign exchange swaps, we know about interest rate swaps, we know about credit default swaps, all that stuff. So today we're going to draw it all together and talk about the consequences of all of this for, for banking. Uh, so we're drawing together all the pieces of the puzzle that we've been building in the, in the, last, in the last two weeks, actually the last, last semester. Um, and in, in, in this lecture, and this is going to be the last one really uh, about banking, the next one that you're going to have on Monday is about economics. So it's going to take all of the stuff we've learned and connect it to the economics that you know, um, to the, the standard macro that you know. Um, but so this is in a way the last one about, about banking. And I start with this slide here. Um, I think I've shown you this before. Uh, this is the famous shadow banking diagram that my friend Zoltan Pozar created when he was at the New York Fed um, that is showing all the different facility, all the way in which uh, loans on this side, okay, were, were funded by deposits on this side. They're securitized, they're sliced and diced. There's various stages, seven stages here. Uh, until they're funded by deposits and money market mutual funds here and so forth. And here wrapped this blue thing here, this U-shaped blue thing, that's the Fed wrapping its encompassing arms around the shadow banking system. Um, and here in these type that's too small, this is all the different uh, facilities, liquidity facilities that it created during the, during the crisis uh, to, to save the system. Um, this is really meant to just be a stunning image that shows you that we're not in this world <laughs> any, anymore, traditional banking. This is sort of modern banking. A lot of this stuff has fallen apart. That's what the cri crisis did. But I don't think it means that shadow banking is, is, is in the past. I think it just means that we've learned that a certain way of putting this together, this, this is a sort of Rube Goldberg machine, right? You know, there's, it's very complicated, okay? But it doesn't have to be that complicated. Um, it's that complicated because it was built little piece by little piece and every piece is built on another one. Um, so I think the next stage is going to be a lot, a lot simpler, but we need to understand what is the underlying logic of that. And that's what I'm going to try to talk about today. What is the underlying logic of shadow banking? Why is shadow banking in our future, given how, how desperately it has, it has failed us? So there, there, uh, let's start with this. Um, shadow banking. Um, is, let's just say, market-based credit. Um, I'm showing down here in the bottom, this is a traditional bank, so that's like the one I show was showing on the board here, the Jimmy Stewart Bank, uh, where the bank is just taking deposits in from retail deposits from members of the community, and it's making loans, retail loans, to members of the community. It's holding reserves, cash reserves, and it has a capital buffer here, um, so that's the liquidity and the solvency. Uh, uh, backstop, and if you run out of liquidity or you run out of solvency, um, there's a further backstop uh, in the government. The Federal Reserve Bank here is the liquidity backstop, and the FDIC is sort of capital backstop for the traditional bank. <coughs> this is the image that most people, probably most people in this room still, even after this course, have in your mind when we say bank, okay? It's, it's something like, like this. And so one way to enter into thinking about what is a shadow bank is through that. I, I will show you later that it, it is a misleading way to enter into it, but let's start there because that's where, where we are in our, in our heads. Um, and so I'm showing up here the shadow banking system, a stylized version of that, of Zoltan's diagram where you have the loans over here, actually I'm showing them already securitized, RMBS means residential mortgage backed security here, and I'm showing the depositors over here, and there's various stages, I have just three stages, three entities, not seven, um, so that you're, car you're tranching these, you're dividing these residential mortgage backed securities into high quality tranche, mid tranche, low tranche, so these are risks, risk tranches, um, and the high tranche is, is held by a shadow bank, uh, and is used as collateral for money market funding. I'm showing their uh, repurchase agreement funding, RP funding. And that repurchase agreement is bought by a money market mutual fund that is using it as an asset uh, to fund uh, 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 deposits. I'm putting deposits in quote there. 
the different one of the differences between the shadow banking system or rather the market based credit system and the and the traditional banking system is that it's largely a wholesale system okay that these that these deposits here these are institutional deposits they're deposits of of, of pension funds of foreign central banks um, you know where a, a small deposit might be 10 million dollars or something you know a corporation something like that. it's not retail it's not it's not you know grandma here okay with her with her passbook saving account um, these are these are wholesale deposits. This is a wholesale money market here, and these are not individual loans on the other side. They're securities. They're packages of loans. You know, they're, it's, this is the capital market we're 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 talking about here. Nonetheless, you know, it's also maybe not local. This could also be abroad. A lot of this was abroad, okay, in 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 Europe, and there's no particular reason that this is a physical institution, you know, sitting sitting on Main Street in some small town in Indiana, okay. Um, this is this is sitting on some computer, okay, uh, so somewhere, uh, 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 maybe even offshore in the Cayman Islands somewhere. Um, <coughs> Even so, we recognize if we look at shadow banking, market-based credit, uh, through the lens of traditional banking, it looks kind of similar, right? That ultimately it's deposits that are funding loans. The big difference that this slide is meant to bring to your attention is that the backstop, the, the government backstop, is not anywhere to be seen here. You know, the Federal Reserve is not is not having any liquidity responsibility nor is there an FDIC equivalent the government is not directly backstopping any of this um, a lot of it as I say was offshore and so the Fed and the FDIC just said well good riddance risk risk that's offshore is not our problem um, we'll see in what way it became their their problem um, but this is this is a beginning